As far as three row vehicles go, you can't do much better than the Kia Telluride. It's a repeat Auto Trader Award winner, meaning it has impressed our jury with its combination of stylish looks, practicality, and overall family friendliness. Now, I happen to think you can do better with a three row, and this is the way to do it, the 2023 Toyota Sienna. And I know a lot of you out there don't think minivans are cool, and that's okay because you're what I like to call wrong. <laughs> More than that though, this thing is practical and efficient in ways the Telluride just can't match. For more expert car reviews, don't forget to share our channel and subscribe so you can catch some of this and maybe even a little of that. Jody, let's talk about the practicality of this cabin. It's probably its best feature. I really think so, especially the front half. You have cubbies and shelves everywhere. My favorite one is this enormous cubby underneath the gear shifter. You could fit so much down there. You know what I actually really like? These shelves on the doors. They're so handy. You could put wallet, keys, gum, anything. I just really like that. Overall, it's just a great vehicle. I love all these little cubbies. This is the kind of stuff that families want and need, and I'm so happy that the Sienna has it all. I also really like this one with the second row captain's chairs. They have that long slide feature. It's something like 25 inches. So if you fold the third row, you can slide the second row all the way back. That's a luxurious amount of leg room, and tell it me, has the leg ottomans. Tell me your kids wouldn't go nuts. I don't have kids, but my boyfriend's kids would love it back there. I didn't mean you specifically. <laughs> I was speaking hypothetically. Tell me people's children wouldn't thoroughly appreciate all that space. I think adults would appreciate all that space. That is awesome. You know what adults will really appreciate? The efficiency of this thing. Oh, that's my second favorite feature of the Sienna. Hit them with it. So it's got the same hybrid powertrain that you can get in everything from the RAV4 to the Camry to the Highlander. It's Toyota's kind of signature system. So it uses a two and a half liter gas engine up front. It's a four cylinder. It's got dual motor generators, electric motor generators under the hood. And then there is a separate electric motor in the back in all wheel drive models like this one that we are in. Net system output is 245 horsepower. And something that I really like is it feels like the system has been properly optimized for the weight and you know just the size of the sienna often it can feel a little bit lethargic it really strains itself but when you get your foot into it it doesn't sound spectacular but that, it's not terrible that pickup was pretty good too that's impressive um when i drove the sienna earlier i was really impressed by how smoothly it shifted from like hybrid to gas powertrain i thought that was great but also that it didn't feel like a bus to drive you know i think a lot of people when they think minivans they think like the old ones which were like really wallowy this one felt like tight and like good and it burns 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers with the all-wheel drive that is as good as a gas-powered uh corolla that figure is incredible for a vehicle of this size and one that has all-wheel drive that's insane and we've been doing way better than that this week when i took it for my drive to start the week i averaged 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers that's way too good that honestly if you okay i kind of crunch the numbers it's just junk math it's not perfect science here but if you take a look at this thing even that 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers okay that's almost five liters per 100 kilometers better than the Telluride is rated for. That's amazing. So that means even if you only average, let's say 500 kilometers to a tank of gas, that means this tank, you'd burn 25 liters less than you would in the Telluride. That adds up so quickly. And that's without you trying that hard, right? It's just amazing to me. And it just makes so much sense. But you know, before we get to the Telluride, we should talk about this infotainment system because I am a little disappointed that Toyota hasn't updated it yet to its latest software. And the new one is so good, so it's a little bit of a disappointment not to see it here. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connections. This is still wired. It's got this outdated navigation system. Not that I'm big on these built-in navs, but the new one, that cloud-based one that you can get from Toyota is very good. So Dan, we're in the Kia Telluride right now. Yeah. Um, and I know you have already made up your mind about the Sienna, but- No, I haven't. 
I have made up my mind that these seats are terrible. They are really uncomfortable. They're really uncomfortable. I do love this leather and I love this color. I think it looks really upscale and very cool. I just wish they were more comfortable. Yeah, it, I said it in the Highlander comparison we did. It feels like I'm sitting on a bunch of folded up cardboard boxes just stacked up. Like they're hard, there's no contouring, there's no support, there's no bolstering. Like I just don't understand how these cut it. So that is a negative part, but I do love that they are heated and ventilated in the front and in the second row, which, you, which is something you rarely see in this segment. So I thought that was impressive. Um, I also think it's very practical in here. I know it's not as practical as what we got in the Sienna, but there's still tons of you know little cubbies for storage. Um, the seats can slide forwards and backwards if you want to make more room. The doors for... are very big. And they uh, open really wide yeah, too, which is nice. The... They extend to the bottoms of the rocker panels, which is really cool because in the winter time, it means your pants aren't gonna get dirty. The lift over in the back isn't too bad. It's not a. I, it's not that I don't like the Telluride, it's just like what I've made my mind up about is that you just can't beat the Sienna when it comes to versatility, practicality. It can even tow. Now, so can this. This can tow more. This can tow 5,000 pounds. That can tow 3,500. Yeah, and this also has a tow mode, which is really cool. That's new for this year, too. That is, yeah, and especially this is the top line X Pro model. So it sits at the very, very top of the Kia Telluride lineup, um, which kind of explains the pricing. It's so expensive. It's like 66 grand yeah. before tax. That is a lot of money. And it's, I looked at it and it, I'm pretty sure there's something like four trims that start above like, $52,000. That's yeah. crazy to me that this thing is so expensive in, in general. And when you take a look at the Sienna, it starts at like 44 grand. Uh, the one that we have is about 56 and a half grand. And then it tops out at 62,500 or so before tax. So it's, it's the value leader, I would say. I think so too. And like the Telluride is good. I really like it. Like I said, and it's an award winner for many different reasons. Um, but everything the Telluride does the Sienna can do just a little bit better. Totally. Now, the one thing that this has kind of in its favor when it comes to that towing, it's got a 3.8 liter V6 engine versus that four cylinder hybrid. It makes 291 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque, eight speed automatic transmission. I don't know, you're driving it. You tell me what you think. Well, I think it comes together really well. Like it's not blazing fast, but it's enough to pass someone without getting too nervous. Like last summer I had it packed up with people and stuff and I was really happy with the performance. Everything just comes together really nicely. But the downside of that V6 is the fuel economy. It's really bad. Uh, right now it's sitting at 11.7. Which is 0.3 worse than its official rating. And you've been pretty, you know, even on the highway, you haven't been doing anything crazy with it. So it does have standard all wheel drive. That explains at least a little bit of that poor fuel economy, but not enough to really justify it, especially when you take a look at that thing burning about five liters, not 0.5 liters, five whole liters less for every hundred kilometers you travel. And that adds up so quickly. And I just think that because the Sienna offers so much more value upfront, but also in like long-term savings, it's hard to beat. Imagine over the course of the year, let's just say you fill up once a week, right? And for every week you're saving 25 liters of gas. Let's also say that the average price of gas is $1.50 in Canada, okay? So give or take 37.50 a week times 52 weeks. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. That's amazing. How can you argue with that, right? Yeah. Like these these SUV lovers out there, I just want to challenge you to like maybe stop caring about what people are thinking. I yeah. know a lot of people who love the Telluride who would be like I would never drive a minivan. And ask yourself why? Because the minivan is so good. I I just think people need to stop caring what other people think about what they drive. I know it's hard and we've talked about it before. I talked about it in the Prius Prime that the last one, you know, it, it is, there is that stigma. You do get a little bit embarrassed because it's your image. It's what you're putting out to the world. But why would you let something like that stand in the way of utmost practicality? That's what it comes down to for me. Now, all the convenience we talked about earlier does carry over to the outside, starting with the kick sensors for both the tailgate and the sliding doors. And they are about as sensitive as I have ever encountered, which is great because it means you and your kids aren't gonna be flailing around like lunatics trying to get the doors open, especially when your hands are full. 
And as easy as it is to get in and out of the Kia Telluride, it is just that much easier in the Sienna. Plus there's no risk of your kids banging up any doors because honestly sliding doors are the best. I also love that the third row in the Sienna is much more spacious and you can fold it down using only one hand. That's honestly as good as it gets. Now, when you leave those seats upright, you get 950 liters because of the deep well where they stow. When you do tuck them away, you get 2,130 liters, which is almost as much as you get in the Telluride with both sets of back seats folded. If I had one complaint about the Sienna, it's that you can't take out the second row of seats. So you can't take full advantage of all of that space. But because it's still so big and boxy, it still has that upper hand in the practicality department. But here's where I might side with those pro SUV people a little bit more. I think the Kia Telluride is much more stylish. I love its boxy look. I think it kind of looks like a budget Range Rover. No way. I love the sculpted lines of the Sienna. The way the nose looks like it was inspired by a Japanese bullet train. It's just super cool. One thing I don't like though, the plastic covers on these 18 inch wheels that are supposed to be alloys underneath. Plastic wheels on a $56,000 vehicle. That's the worst. To recap, we love how stylish and spacious the Sienna is, as well as its compact car efficiency. We don't like that it doesn't have Toyota's latest infotainment system or the cheap plastic wheel covers this tester has. In terms of the Telluride, we don't like how stiff and uncomfortable the seats are, that it's so expensive, and that it's pretty inefficient, especially compared to the Sienna's hybrid powertrain. But we do like how stylish it is, that it is so user-friendly, and that it's pretty practical for a three-row SUV. I really love that the Kia Telluride comes with a long list of standard safety features and the fact that it's so family friendly and practical. But the fact of the matter is that the Sienna can match all of those safety features and is even bigger and more practical. Say what you want about minivans not being cool, but I've seen the way some of you out there dress. Okay, seriously though, Toyota has done an amazing job making this thing look super stylish, plus it is so efficient that I almost guarantee you will instantly see the savings. And it's not that there's much wrong with the Kia Telluride, but if you're seriously shopping for a family hauler, the Sienna is just so good at that job that it really becomes a no-brainer for both of us to recommend it. Good on you.